So the good news is that we have now launched the API for Crypto Wizards. The bad news is it took us forever to get here. So thank you for your patience on that. For those of you who have been using the application here and thinking, wow, I really could do with having some API access so that I can get to opportunities quicker or I can check pairs quicker for whatever application you're using this for. And there are many people using it for many different reasons. You can now access this via an API. So if you're into your programming side and you want to get that data, you can, including some of the top scanned, pre-scanned items here as well. If you go over here and you click on either there or up here by API, you'll come over to this page. You can create an API key. I'm going to do that right now. When I click on that, it says any existing keys will be made inactive and I'm okay with the disclaimer, etc. I'm gonna use this for personal use. And I understand that this is subject to change because it's all brand new. So let's just go and hit confirmed. Notice you have an API key, a credit limit for that key, and whether or not that key is active. When first scoping this out, it was thought that anyone who wanted API access would likely have to pay extra because of the extra compute and all of that stuff that goes with it. And luckily, we've been able to build it so that every wizard can have access to the API at no extra cost. So this thousand credits per day is available to everyone and anyone. You can just sign in, create a key and get going. And I'm going to show you how to get going in a second. For a very small group of people, and you probably already know who you are because you've been in contact with me, you can upgrade your account. You can just go over here to your account, go to manage billing upgrade your account, and then you'll get access to 50,000 credits per day. Now, what do credits actually allow you to access? Is that a lot or is that a little? Well, that actually depends. It's a heck of a lot, depending on what you're requesting and what you're sending with that request. Let me give you a bit more info on that. So if you go over here to the API documentation, this is now at api.cryptowizards.net. You don't need to be a member to Go and read this, by the way, and look at the API. Just go to api.cryptowizards.net. And you'll see here's an introduction page here. So all wizards have access to 1,000 credits, and you can upgrade to 50,000 credits per a day. So 1,000 credits per day or 50,000 per day. What does that get you? Well, let's say you want to get some co-integration information or maybe some spread statistics. So let's go over here to a post request for spread. Now, if you don't know what a post request is and you're not familiar with working with APIs, then this is not going to be a very good video for you, by the way. You're going to find most of this confusing, even though I have got code examples where you could just plug and play this. If you're not a programmer, this is of no use to you. So maybe just click off the video or come back and revisit it another time. But that said here, I want to get some spread statistics. So I can get the spread statistics like this in short. So this will give me the hedge ratio, the half-life, the Hurst, the how many times it crossed, the last Z-score, the Z-score itself, in other words, the spread, the latest Z-score of the spread, the normalized spread, or the rolling Z-score. So I can get all of that in a quick snapshot, or I can get all of that with history. So if you want to keep your data light and you don't want the historical spread data, the same sort of data that's used to build the charts, by the way, if you don't want that, you can just leave this with history as false. But if you want it with history, you can put with history here as true, and it will give you the actual spread itself, as well as these key statistics down here. So all of that will just cost you one credit. Whether you ask for it with history or not, it's all just going to cost you one credit. So if you have a thousand credits per day, you can request a thousand spreads per day. If you have the upgraded API access, if that's something you know you need, and if you're not sure if you need it, you probably don't need it, by the way. But if you have the upgraded API access, then that will be 50,000 of these you could request per day. If you want to run a back test, that's the only one of these post requests that takes up quite a bit more computation. And so that counts as two credits. And that's going to give you pretty much everything that you can get for one credit from uh, your spread statistics, but it's also going to give you your total return over here as well based on a back test. So it's going to give you some extra metrics and also some other history here in terms of your back test returns. So think of it like your equity curve over there. And so if you're requesting this without history, it'll just give you those returns and of course some other metrics as well, like your VAR, your CVAR, your max drawdown, your sharp ratio, your win rate, 
all of that kind of stuff that you're used to seeing on the platform. So you'll get that with the back test. There's of course another endpoint here for co-integration and co-integration will also come back with back test here. So if you're like, well, I wanna know the spread, I wanna know the back test results, I wanna know is it co-integrated, I wanna know all those metrics in one go, you can just run this and for two credits, in other words, 25,000 times a day, you'll be able to get that information. Now, what's the difference between, for example, this co-integration or let's say the spread post request here and this get one down here? What's the difference? Well, the get request is gonna cost five credits. So you'd be thinking, well, wait a minute, what? That makes no sense. If you're doing a GET request, you are asking the API to go and fetch exchange data or other data. It could be Forex, could be stocks, depending on what exchange you use. If you use Forex or stocks as your exchange, then it's gonna go and fetch that data. Because there's such a high cost to managing all that data and managing the rate limits and various machines having to operate around that, the cost to crypto wizards, for example, is a lot higher when you're doing that. And that's why the API request, when you are asking for that data, is gonna be a lot higher. Well, then the next question becomes, well, how are we getting the data for these requests here, where it's just one credit? You just provide it, you just get closed prices, you send them in your request, and the Crypto Wizards API engine will use those closed prices to calculate all of these stats for you. And don't worry if you're not sure where to get those. I've got both Python and TypeScript examples here as well. So I'll just go over to that right now. And you can see I've actually got code here for you on how to go and pull prices. So the exchange I'm using here actually is Binance. And if that doesn't work, Binance US, but you can put in whatever you want. So this will actually show you how to go and get that data and then feed it into one of your requests. So for example, let's say we're getting some correlation metrics or let's do one that we've actually looked at down here. So let's go down to our spread. You can see here, we're sending in the closed prices and whatever spread type, rolling window I want, with or without history, send that in and I get a result back. And don't worry, I'm actually gonna run this for you now. So I'm gonna run this both in Python and in TypeScript for you now. So all of these API docs come with examples as well, fully coded from the ground up with readmes and everything. So if you're not, super au fait with programming and APIs. You've used them a bit in the past and you find documentation really annoying. I've tried to make sure this documentation is really clear in terms of what it provides and also how to go about requesting the data. So let's actually go and do that now. I've actually got VS Code open. So you can go and download that data, put it into a project file or just do git clone, whatever you want to do. And I've got some instructions here as well. So just bear in mind if you're using Python and you want to run this, you want to make sure that you've got the same virtual environment variables I've got here. And that means just installing these over here. So pip install our requirements.txt. If you're familiar with Python, you don't need me to tell you all this. You're already familiar with it, but just so you know where everything is. And then you can just go and run whatever example you want. You can see we've got backtest get, backtest post, co-integration get, co-integration post, and et cetera, et cetera. Notice here in the constants file, I've got it both for Python and down here for TypeScript as well. So let me just go and open that here too. Notice how we have this API key replace with your key. So if you try to run this with this replace with your API key, it's not gonna work. So you need to go over to Crypto Wizards here, copy your API key, and then head back over here and replace this here with your API key. And of course, I'm using this for demo purposes. I'll delete this key after this video, but nonetheless, this is what you're going to do here. Also note here that I've got some dummy price series as well, just for testing over here as well. You can ignore that really, but it's just there to help make all the code work for some of the examples. So I'm going to go up here to Python as well, and I'm just going to go and paste in my API key over there. Now, let me go to my terminal and I'm going to cd into Python first of all. So let's run a Python example. And I've already got my virtual environment set up. And because I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna go source v and v bin dash activate. And now I'm activated in my virtual environment and I'm gonna go Python three. And let's see, what do I wanna run? I'm gonna run it in the examples folder because that's what I wanna break into this examples folder. And let's actually run a copula. That sounds fun. Let's run a copula. Uh, let's run a get request for this one here. So copula get dot 
pi and hit enter. And this is one that will cost me five credits because it's actually having to go and fetch the data on my behalf and manage all of that for me. And then here we go. We've got copula name Clayton and the conditional probabilities over here as well. So this would be X given Y. So X being less than or equal to its value given where Y is, is this percentage here and the same for Y given X. So by the way, if I actually just go to the Z score tool over here, and just go to any old copula, let's pick this one here. That's the same as this X given Y and Y given X. So this number here, which is very key to an arbitrage strategy if you're managing copulas or working with copulas, that's what this here is telling me. If you wondered how I knew I was gonna get that or how I would have known uh, without having had run that code, I could just go to copula either here or down here and get, it's the same answer it gives me. And here's the response it gets me over there. Let's now do an example with TypeScript. So I'm going to CD into TypeScript over here and let's run one. Let's see, which one shall we run there? Let's run a post one. We could do correlations. Let's do a spread post over there. In fact, I'm going to go down to this here and let's see what I've got set up. Okay, this is actually going to run with history. I could either just remove this because it's an optional field. So for example, if I go here to spread, and you can see here with history, it's optional. It's not a required field. So technically I could just remove this whole line if I didn't want it, but I'm gonna leave it there set to true. My rolling window for a Z-score rolling, that's gonna be important if you care about, you know, rolling Z-score rather than just Z-score or spread, same thing. Remember the spread or the Z-score is just a normalized spread. A rolling Z-score is a normalized spread with a rolling window. So I've gone over that in many videos before. I won't hop on about that here. So here we're gonna go TS node. And actually, if you go to the readme, by the way, you'll see here, it'll tell you, make sure you have TypeScript nodes, a TS node in TypeScript installed to go and run this code if you wanna run it exactly like I'm running it here. And let's go back to our spread post here. And I'm gonna go into source examples, and that is then going to be spread-post.ts and hit enter there. And there you go. You can see it's given me all of this data here, my rolling Z score and my Z score and my spread before it gets normalized. And then of course down here, my metrics. So how many times it crossed the mean, so zero, and how many times it crossed two standard deviations here. So because I requested it with history, I got all of that. If I set this to false or remove with history and just run that again, then let's see what it does. There we go. So you can see it's emptied these out over here for me. So each of those requests there, for example, cost me just one credit. And the reason for that is because I extracted the prices for Bitcoin and Ethereum in this case myself and sent them to the algorithm. And because I did that, I got a much faster response. It cost me a lot less. And now I can request a lot more, which is great. The other advantage of that is, for example, if you have data that crypto wizards doesn't, you can send whatever data you want for whatever time frame you want. Crypto Wizards, of course, has certain exchanges that you can use and also certain time frames. So for example, here, if I wanted to go and get some data for an exchange, I've got Binance, Binance US, Bybit, Coinbase, DYDX, Forex, and stocks or something else like an ETF. But that might not be the data you're analyzing. Maybe you're analyzing e-mini futures or something else you have access to also at a different time frame, other than daily, four hour, one hour, or five minute. If that's the case, you can just get that data, just get the close prices and push them into this API uh, in e any one of these post requests and you will get your answer. So there are some get requests you can make that will cost you nothing. So for example, here, credits used, this will tell you how much in any given day you've used because these limits are per day. When a new day starts in UTC, the clock strikes back to zero again. So here you have zero credits used for this one. In terms of the scanner itself, where you see all of these opportunities here that we go through and then we refresh to see what's the latest data, you can actually get those all over here by going to pre-scanned. And there's only two inputs. You can prioritize by sharp ratio, timestamp spread, or rolling Z-score, and you can filter based on a spread, a Z-score rolling, or a copula-based strategy, and you'll get all of this data back and I think it's a hundred items that you'll get back per a request. Irrespective of all that, this is all of course very, very new. A lot of you will know I've been very apprehensive about putting an API out because there's a lot of cost and management that is associated to that. 
But I think this is the right step forward for everyone. And I do thank you for your patience and support in helping us to get this far. I'm glad for some of the folk watching this that it's going to make your life much, much easier. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.